Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Kaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging that's out Anna. with us. And that's Hannah. <laughs> Hannah says hi. And we have uh, eight other pities that probably say hi too, if you guys said hi to them. And we're sorry for the distractions because they're always around us doing pity bowl things. And so here we are, and this time it is a end of a Shabbat, and I brought my fam with me along with this because we are reading through the book of the Nazarene. And for those who have not been reading through the book of the Nazarene, this is an incredible, incredible book. This is a book that you will only find at Yah Scriptures. It is the end. It's the very last book at Yah Scriptures. Yah Scriptures is able to be found at yahscriptures.com. There's a free PDF. There is a apocrypha free PDF. There is an eSword app that is completely free. And there is also a Google app that is completely free. Now, Yah Scriptures is the only ministry that is attempting to have a free Bible printing press that delivers prisoners that are in the U.S. Bibles for free. This is what we are doing. And so everyone that is able to purchase one of these scriptures, we are able to help and to minister to our brothers and sisters in chains and deliver these scriptures to them as we discuss with them the walk in the Torah life. And so as we are reading through the book of the Nazarene right here, we are on chapter 7, and it is verse 12 that we are into. And the, again, for those who do not know about the book of the Nazarene, this is a, this should have been in, like it should have been Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Khalidi, right? It should have been right up in this order because this is the same timeline that we are walking with our Messiah as he's going through his times and all. Okay, you guys all ready? This will be weird. I've done all these other segments without you guys, so this is going to be a one-off because I rarely get my family here anymore to be able to do this, and so unfortunately, this is the only time we can do this. So here we are, seven twelve. A man in the crowd said, this is a day of fasting kept by all who are truly religious, yet here are you and your Talmudim eating and drinking. Yahushua said, it is unusual for attendants at the bridal shower to deprive themselves of pleasure while the bridegroom is with us. Soon he will depart, and that is the time for hearts to be heavy. A heart weighed down without cause is an unnecessary burden, adding neither joy nor benefit to the lives of men. Fasting is good, but when it com becomes a routine religious rite, it is no more than a purposeless vexation. All right, so this is where in this scriptures we um, are discussing a lot of this and I guess I will discuss this unless you guys have something you want to pipe in on this but what we're talking about right here is we're talking about um, we're talking about these Pharisees and Sadducees and these guys are people who were religious zealots of this day with their own religion and they're they're asking why the disciples of our Messiah are still eating and drinking and they're not fasting and the answer is extremely um, provocative when we understand the, the, the understanding of it. So Messiah clearly says, there, let's just look at the good stuff first, right out of the middle. The middle of this is the, is the pieces that I take into um, my life because I, I see this, this thing and it talks about a heart weighed down without cause is an unnecessary burden, adding neither joy nor benefit to the lives of men. And we're talking about fasting right here. And when you are in Judaism, when you have the extracurricular books of Judaism, which are like hundreds, they have days and moments of fasting. And if you are not fasting according to their words, then you're not fasting. Now, the thing is, in Torah, we have no commandment that talks about fasting. We have no command that says you are to fast on this day. There are certain times where we will afflict our being Want, during the appointed times and even then it doesn't say to fast but it says to afflict your being so a fast is a good way to do this but what they're talking about messiah talks about is that if you're just fasting as a routine of a religious rite it's useless right there's a time and a reason to fast and if you are just simply doing it as the routine then don't look for religious um joy coming down because messiah says it's just a vexation it's purposeless vexation and so when you fast make sure you are fasting for the right reasons there's always health there's always a spiritual side of things but if it's just something that goes on a calendar and, and you're just doing it because everybody else does it and you have no idea why fasting is a time to get very close to our creator fasting is something that you will um, become spiritually strong and it's almost like the longer you fast the harder it is and the stronger you will come out of the, the fast anyone have anything no, no. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Not everyone wants, please. Thank you. Here Where go. does it say, though, that people always question the fast? Is it in Zechariah? Yeah, there's there's several different places. There's there's several places in the prophets that it talks about a fast. And that's what when I am talking to my brothers and sisters in chains, they have um, they have Judaism, the people that come in on the on the seventh day or when they come in and they're always telling these guys based upon Judaism, you got to fast on this day, you got to fast on this day. So we get a lot of questions that come in from the prison system on people that when they end up in a, um, it's not unhinged, but it's an unyoked um, biblical belief. You end up with all sorts of different beliefs and all sorts of different leaders. And these leaders are having them do things that when we, we don't want to do things that break Deuteronomy 4 too, which is don't add to or take away from the Torah. And so if we're sitting here scheduling these things outside of Torah, that's not what we should be doing. Now, continuing on, 714. A soldier in the crowd asked Yahushua, and again, for those who do not know, that is the name of our Messiah. There were no J's in Hebrew. And so you have the name of the creator of the universe and the name of his son, Yahushua. Yahushua said, a soldier in the crowd asked Yahushua, do you uphold the teachings of Yochanan of the wilderness? For there was a man I can understand. For those, again, who do not know who Yochanan was, there were no J's in Hebrews. And so this is talking about John the Immerser, John the Baptist. And the, the question from the soldier was for, um, is this, are, do you uphold the teachings of Yochanan? Yahushua replied, Yochanan sent men to me inquiring whether I was the promised one or should they look for another? I said, go back and inform Yochanan of all the things you have heard and seen here and how the poor are learning about the coming rule of Elohim and the disinherited told when justice will reign. I think Yahushua is saying that Yochanan upholds the teachings Yahushua has. Yeah, I think is what he's saying from that. They were in the same. Thing. They, they, were they are the same things. They are absolutely in that. And also, prior in the book of the Nazarene, um, there was a question of uh, which teaching was right, Messiah's or Yochanan. And Messiah says they each lead to the exact same output. So it doesn't matter which one or or both of them that you take, as long as we are walking to the Torah to the outcome of the kingdom. Okay, uh, continuing on sixteen. People went out into the wilderness expecting to find a great man. And this is Messiah talking about Yochanan, the immersive. But what had they in mind? A man speaking like the Nebium of old or a nobleman clad in garments of fine linen? Yochanan dressed in a manner fit for the place and purpose. And he spoke in accordance with the message he had to convey. He was the man of whom the Kodesh books speak. A voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the path for one who follows and this is um, this is what we've always been looking for, right? This is the, the 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 one crying in the wilderness, preparing the path, because we knew the the forecomer right before Messiah was John the Baptist, and this was these are all prophecy that is being fulfilled. And when it's talking about the Kodesh books, we're talking about the Torah and the prophets. We're talking. There's no other Kodesh book as these as people write the New Testament. They didn't have a New Testament. There was no such thing. They had the Kodesh books, and they were writing from that perspective of everything that was set into precedence from the very beginning is what they were writing about. 17. I tell you with all sincerity, no mother ever gave birth to a better man than Yochanan. Yet when the rule of Elohim comes, everyone living will have to exceed him. Ever since Yochanan declared these things, he was harried with violence, even though all the Nebium before him foretold present events. He spoke with the voice of Eliyahu. And if any of you have the understanding, you will know what I mean. Okay. Um, this is very hard, gentlemen, boys, girls. Um, it talks about right here that the coming rule of Elohim, we have to exceed. The dogs are going crazy. We have to exceed the, um, the good man that, that Yochanan was, right? This guy was a was a jewel set among men that everybody saw was absolutely great. But what Messiah says here is that we have to exceed this. And that's going to be very, very hard. As Messiah talks about the kingdom to come, the kingdom to come is a holy place. It is a place that is based upon Kodesh people, the people, holy people, the people who are, who value the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, and they have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. Continuing on, Messiah says, Concerning this generation, which is wrapped up within itself, and blind to all going on about it, there is little to say. It is like children at play, calling out to one another, We play the pipes, but you refuse to dance. We raise a lament, but you will not mourn. 
Like all good men, Yochanan was misunderstood, for few knew the measures of greatness. He lived neither simply, neither eating nor drinking to excess, and because of his way of life, men call him crazy. The servant of man, who is Messiah, comes along and goes among the people, eating and drinking with them, and he is accused of gluttony, loose living and drunkenness. What must a man do to prove himself in the eyes of the people? Whatever he does is wrong. Now you can see the struggles Messiah has, right? You can see the struggles that people, John the Baptist had, right? He's a guy out there with his, his very small amount of clothing. We know that he ate locusts and wild honey. We knew that he was a man of, the, of basically the, the woods. This was uh, one of these guys. And he lived like this. People called him crazy. Messiah comes along and they call him a glutton, loose living and drunkenness. And there's times very much in the, in the book of Nazarene where it talks about his, his family thinking prior he was crazy and they, they would have to restrain him. So this is the hard life and walk that Messiah had. I don't think he was understood by most of those around him. Continuing on. One of the Pharisees, Parashim, who was nearby, said to Yahushua, we understand your meaning, but where do you stand in relation to the Torah? Have you come to take it away or declare it obsolete? Okay, well, this is um, one of these things that we've heard before. And if you ask any Christian what it is about Messiah in relation to the Torah, they will say he came and fulfilled the Torah, that it is gone, that we no longer have to keep this Torah, that it is something for the old people, the people of old. And if you ask any Christian about this, you will trigger them. You will have them going in convulsions. If you tell them the laws of our creator are good for all times and all people and all generations, and they're good for you, that is fighting words, son. That will make them very mad. So the question to Messiah is, have you come to take it away or declare it obsolete? Folks, listen up. Yahushua replied, no one patches an old cloak with new fabric, for this shows up its age without strengthening it. Likewise, no sensible person puts new wine into old wineskins, for this causes them to split. The wine pouring out, so neither the wine nor the wineskins have any value. Is it not much wiser to put new wine into new wineskins? I have come to place something beside that which is already there, to hold a mirror to the Torah and to man, so both may be seen with greater clarity. Now, gentlemen, Eli, hey, did Messiah say the laws of our Creator are gone? This no. is what he's answering in this question. Why not? Because he said he came to magnify it. And he said, yeah, to basically what he's doing, he's, he's giving us better clarity. Nothing that we learn in the book of the Nazarene goes against the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. In fact, it, it magnifies every degree of it. And we learn things in the book of the Nazarene, things like we don't know the Torah well enough to judge on a particular part of it because we need to know all of scriptures. We need to have everything as in the eyes of the Torah to be able to judge correctly in all of this. So Messiah never got rid of it. He says his will is the will of his father. It's very important that we understand this. 22, a poor man standing nearby said, what use is the wisdom of the Kodesh books? Will it provide our bread? So here is a big question right here, right? Somebody wants to know what is the Torah? Is the Torah going to provide our bread? Yahushua replied, what use is a lamp at night? Will it light? Will its light appease hunger? Is it worthless because it cannot do so? Each thing has its appointed use. The foot should not be called upon to do the work of the arm, nor the ear, the work of the eyes. So again, Messiah is clearly talking about that the Torah is part of light. We may not get fed in a physical form from the Torah, but what we what we will do is it will it will light our, our way. It will take us to where we need to be. Right. And so not all things you can't just say, I don't have this or I don't have that because you're living at the Torah. The Torah is just a guide to life is what it is. Twenty four. A carpenter does not do the work of a potter, nor does a weaver make plows. A pupil may not be a good teacher nor a servant, a good master. Each must seek only to excel in the position he has and not to be better than others at their own task. Whoever supports me, that person will I support and I will strive with those who are against me. Okay, and this is still continuing on with the question from above. What it use is the wisdom of the Kodesh books, right? And it talks again that a carpenter does not do the work of a potter. We all have our own tasks. We all have our own way. This is how our creator works. Our creator works in us so that he doesn't have to do this work himself. He has a set of people, his people, and when we are doing our job 
Our creator will guide us to put us where we need to be and we will be most effective at the job he gave us because he knew we were built and assigned for this. And so we must seek only to excel in the position we have and not to be better than others at their own task. Important stuff. I mean, this is like the guidepost for life and all sorts of things. 25. I have not come to bring peace, shalom, but to put a sword into the hands of men, setting sons against their fathers and daughters against their mothers, for nothing is worthy if a man will not fight for it. Anyone following me will find enemies among his own kindred. And though he love his parents above all else, I will give him a cause which is greater. My burden is not light and must be shouldered with fortitude and courage. Those finding it too heavy must go elsewhere. Gentlemen, either to you, take a stab at this. He says that the things he has given us is not too hard, right? Like the Torah is not too hard. If you can't accept the teaching, you cannot accept the Torah, you must go somewhere else. You must sit outside the assembly. Yeah, you must say, yeah, if you, if that's one thing. And he's also talking about um, the peace, right? This is, Eli, why doesn't he say that, the, why does he say mothers will be against their daughters, fathers, and everybody against everybody? What does he mean by this? Because not everyone in the family will be keeping his commands, keeping his Torah. Yeah, it is. This is a this is simply a, a, a division of families. It happened to us when we went into Torah. We had our families. They started laughing and snickering, and we didn't keep. We stopped keeping Christmas and Easter and all these other holidays. Then we became even weirder and weirder. Um, that is what it does. The the word of our Creator and His Son absolutely will split families that are not Torah based. Continuing on, the man who seeks to preserve his life through cowardice will be deprived of its benefits. And he who is prepared to make sacrifices for the cause of man will surely gain the crown of life. Whoever receives a good and just man openly, giving him his due, shall in turn be given the reward of his merit. But those who expect to receive rewards bestowable only by the one greater than a nabi will be disappointed. Okay, do you want to take a stab? Anyone? Anyone? Do you listen? Good? Yeah. What you got? Uh, he says basically that... Eli, what do you got on this? We'll try and figure it out. He okay. says that if you if you help someone, right, and you will get your reward, it will it will be given to you of your merit. But you're saying to only be given something greater than what Yahuwah, or what Yahuwah can give you. If you want something greater than that, it should be Yahuwah. That'd be the one greater than that. Yeah, and you know this and, is a this is an alpha, this is kind of an alpha male kind of a verse, right? The man who seeks to preserve his life through cowardice will de be deprived of his benefits, right? What uh, a cowardly man is, is somebody who absolutely will not stick up for the, the things of the, the of the Torah. The easiest way, the cheating ways, the uh, worst yeah, what way it, possible. Absolutely. And so that will that will mess up our current life, and that will also mess up the ability to gain the crown of life. All right, continuing on. Eli, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you for an answer on this, so pay attention, please. It was after this that Yahushua said to his Talmudim, when the task is difficult, a man who seeks, a man seeks cons consolation from his father. A man may be lonely among many, but no one be lonely for the Ruach, for this is never shut off from communication with a source of comfort. Okay? What do we got with that? Um, well, he says the Ruach is always there, right? There's never a reason to feel lonely. Yahuwah is always there. His Ruach is always there. And it's, never, <clears throat> it's never cut off. Yeah, and like a man will seek consolation with his father, we all have this ability that we can pray to our Creator. We have a way to pray. We have a line of communication, and we have... Um, an understanding that our prayers are listened to. Now, Messiah says, then Yahushua prayed. Uh, and this is a, a very good example of, again, how do we pray? We're not praying to the Son. Messiah didn't say, pray to me. This is how he said to pray. O Father above the Shemaim and earth, who is above the heaven and earth, your Ben, your Son submits to your will. And if things declared in your name remain mysteries to the learned, but are revelations to the simple hearted, you know best, my father. You have placed a great responsibility on your son, but few heed him. The father's words spoken through the mouth of his Ben are not highly regarded. Now, what's interesting is the, the words spoken by Yahuwah for most people are absolutely not well regarded. And so Messiah, you can see right here that he's struggling, right? He's, he's, he's having an issue, right? He prays these things and he's, he knows that People don't care what he has to say, which means they don't care what his dad has to say. From the days of Moses till now, it's the same. It's a stiff-necked people. Yeah, and absolutely stiff-necked people. Absolutely. Since the beginning of time, it's the same thing. Nobody regards it. That's why the northern tribe and the southern tribe all ended up in captivity. 
All right, we'll probably end it um, where it looks normal to end. So start 29. Later in another place, Yahushua said to the people gathered there, follow me, all those who are overburdened and weary, and I will help you. Take the yoke of my cause upon you and learn from me, for this will ease and not add to your load. I am understanding and compassionate, not expecting anyone to bear a load too heavy for them. The heavy laden shall know the light and be moved from the darkness, but they who cast aside their burdens and go astray are lost forever in darkness. Life loads each according to his capacity, and no two bear a similar burden. Um, I think we'll discuss this, and I think we will end on this thing, because it's very clear in scriptures that our Creator will not give us more than we are able to handle. And sometimes in life, that feels very uh, not reassuring, because some of us feel like we're at the very bottom. We don't, we're being tested. We don't know it's a test. We just figure everything's going against us. But you know what? The entire land and what we learn from, from the Nazarene is that these are testing grounds for all of us. And that unless we are tested, then we absolutely will not shine. We cannot make the kingdom if we are not dedicated, loyal people who are willing to be tested and come out glistening and shining. And so as we are Yah's people, understand that in the book of Revelation, Hasatan hates us. He hates people that are loyal to our creator. That is what he spent his entire life trying to get people away from, from the days of Adam and Eve and to all of us now, to, to all of our kids. That is his job is to pull us away from Torah, pull us out of the kingdom to come, load us up with the worries and the, and the problems of life so that we can't even breathe. And that's what he wants. And it's those of us who are able to see through and take the blessings out of absolutely everything around us that will know that our creator is right there and he won't let us get taken. He will not let us get taken, which is why we need to stay in prayer. We need to listen in prayer. We need to be in prayer. And that will be a communication to the spiritual protection that is always available to all of us. All right. So I think that does it for all of us. Thank you guys very, very, very much. We hope that you guys have a good day. And until next time, we're out. All right. Shalom. Shalom.